Hello, it's Sarah, and today's video is me creating art. No, I'm only kidding. I'm working on a project. I had these little, they're, they're, they're kind of, they're literally like a honeycomb shape, actually. Yeah, look, they're the honeycomb shape. Anyway, because I was going to put one of the uh, Barbara Nielsen designs on here, like a little egg or something, but I decided to do, here, hold on, let me get... Um, I have this. I did a little tag. This is a Tracy Moreau design that I will put the link in the description box for the pattern packet. It's this, the Be Kind Bee Skep with daisies and these little three-dimensional bees. And they were available from Tracy. I don't know if they still are, but I have some. Um that I'm going to use for this. I don't know. I don't think you have to. And her pattern actually had bees that you can trace on too. But I just took in the pattern packet. She has different. Um, I think I used. Remember I shared this little piece. You are my sunshine. So I think I used this one. Because I thought it was smaller. The daisies were a little bigger on the tag. So I wanted to make them a little smaller. And that's what I love about this specific um, decorative painting uh, art form is because we can uh, take someone else's designs and create our own like put it on other things <laughs> is what I'm trying to say so just because Tracy did it on a, a plaque which I love and this is hanging in my uh, Zen Den I wanted to just use this little box and I'm so excited so I'm going to probably be gluing or using a little bee. I'll put it like right here. I'm going to rise it up though. So before I do any of that, I wanted to find a stencil and I found one. I was using a different stencil. This is a little big but I think it's good in comparison to the bee. Maybe not the daisies. I'm going to take this little piece of sponge very tiny little piece of sponge and I'm going to use some honey brown and I'm going to put it on my palette and really try to um man I don't have words today <laughs> I want to get it to be light like I don't want it to be super dark so I'm going to put the sponge in there and then I'm going to tap it off and just keep kind of tapping it off so see, now it's getting lighter. I haven't done this in so long. Yeah, I'm not loving it. I think I have to hold it differently. This might be a little too... Maybe if I do it like that. I have a stencil brush, but I'm not the best stenciler either. I kind of like the, the spongy effect. I have a makeup sponge too that I... Thought I, oh, right here. I think I might use this. Let me try that instead. But I did like the, like, the and you could use, I have a lot of sponges. I just don't have them at the ready. Now, I see how that's making a line? All right, let me go away, and I'll be right back, and I'm going to figure this out. All right, I found this Tim Holtz thingy. I don't know if it's going to work or get the effect that I'm, going for it, but I'm just going to try and lightly put kind of haphazard little, because it's a very different surface, it's a little curved, and um, so I'm just going to gently, oh boy, it's not really, this is not easy, and it's moving, I think I should use it, oh, I kind of like it, I kind of like it. I should probably just use a stencil brush though. So I want to continue this over this side. Trying to line it up how I had it on that side. So anyway, I, I had a lot of ideas about what I was going to do with this, but this is what we're going with. I have another one of these. I got this box at Hobby Lobby. So, 
and I could always paint over it. I was going to use ink. So see, that kind of looks cool, like just, and then I'll skip that section and put a little, like I don't want it to be everywhere or really, and then I'm going to use the pen. I wanted to use, because in Tracy's, she uses a different pen. She uses this pen, the, the gel Signo, oopsie, the Uniball Signo black gel pen. I'm trying to find the like, uh, I think it's like point... I can't find it, but it's just, see how like on the wings and like she outlined all the daisies and stuff and like even, she outlines everything and I just love it. So I'm kind of playing around with the idea of this outlining and I'll do that on some of the um, honeycombs. That one looks kind of small, like I didn't line it up right. I think it looks good though. All right, I'm going to do a few more. So I'll go away and come back when I'm ready to do the top. Okay, I mean, I like it. I didn't love using that sponge, but it, it got the effect that I wanted. I think I will use, I will do a proper stenciling technique next time. I just haven't done a lot of stenciling and I felt very weird about it. I don't know, but that's kind of what I was going for. And then here's the box. And then I'll put a B up here. So just FYI, this is uh, Tracy Moreau. If you go, I'm going to put in the link in the description for you to find this pattern. She also has a tutorial. Uh, I will link that as well on her YouTube channel for this very piece, for this one. <clears throat> and actually, it's using... I didn't get the stencil in time to do it, but this uh, it's a cool technique the way she gets the board in the back to look like it's a, an old piece of wood with this um, Stampers Anonymous um, wood grain, I guess it's called, layering stencil. Anywho, um, I just wanted to show you how I'm going to adapt it to this piece. So I'm going to do a little bit of painting with you guys, but then I'm not going to do the whole thing. Um, yeah, because I don't, I can't do a tutorial on my channel of the same thing that she did. So I think I'm going to go away and come back when it's, uh, I don't know, maybe when I'm doing the lines. So here it is with the pen lines and a little bit of floating. I did a line at the top and the bottom kind of like even on the ones that were faint I put a line and this is me just figuring it out playing around I have no idea um, before uh, I put a line on the edge too I could do another one on the bottom that might look nice and then the final part is to just outline all the petals of these daisies and it really makes them pop so kind of like this um, I did not erase you know what I think I'm gonna erase and I use the blue Sorel tracing paper Tracy does not recommend the blue Sorel tracing paper she just recommended um, graphite paper regular graphite I'm looking for my um, eraser I just had the um, the blue Sorel out because that's what Barb Nielsen recommends um, and she says to erase with a vinyl eraser. I have so many erasers and it's crazy because I can't find one at the moment. Oh, I found a sponge though. This is a very cool sponge. Um, so here it is. This is a vinyl eraser, so I'm just going to erase these blue Sorel lines. Um, I think they're water-based too, so I might even be able to do it with... Everything's dry though. I might be able to do it with water, just take them off. I don't really want to hit the um, ink lines because I could smudge them. I believe a gel pen is not permanent. So what I'm going to do when I'm done inking, this is a 
gel pen. That's what Tracy Moreau likes to use. I have both. I have a permanent ink pen as well. But these lines are kind of jiggly. She doesn't really try to be perfect with them. It's just a way to... Um, this is kind of a... One of the front petals has like a little... It's like a heart shape almost. This one. You can really get the tips into the shape that they were before you painted. Um, I don't feel like she really, she didn't outline the leaves with the black pen. It was only the petals of the flowers. Oops, I kind of, see this? I can get it off quickly if I feel like I made a mistake. I'm going to take this out and spray it with a Krylon Matte Spray. Um, probably give it a coat of... I like satin. I've been putting satin on um, my eggs and stuff the Barb Nielsen projects and I think I did satin on these I, I put a coat of satin on here it just gives it a sheen oh that was way too close up <clears throat> it's not like shiny but it's satiny she's back <laughs> uh, Jenny came down my other dog. She's my son's dog. Um, and she was kind of hanging out with her for a minute, but evidently Jenny went back to sleep. So I think, eh, might as well put a line here. I don't need it. And I'm sure I could put, oh, you know what she did do was spatter. I never spattered my other one. I think I do want to spatter this. See, I didn't spatter this either. Um, let me see. So, when I come back, I'm going to be gluing on the B and attaching the lid. All right, I'll be back. I think I decided to, I think I did decide, okay, to paint the inside of the box gold. I'm using Glorious Gold, and we will see what that looks like. I was also debating using my gold leafing pen on the went like the outside of the bees but I think I might just touch it up with a little like I think asphaltum would cover it because I'm not going to be able to get into the arms and all that stuff with gold I think I'm better off um, I need more uh, here it is I'm almost I can't you know what's weird like I change around my craft room so much and like organize that I and I lose stuff. But I've often put a coat of gold inside. Sometimes I even put felt. This is gonna this one would be a little more tricky to do that because it's got so many sides to it. But just a like one coat of gold should do the trick. It'll just give it a, a more finished feel. I think it would look great natural as well because of the design. You know, it's a, a a nature design, so I think that makes sense. You know, you could just use the raw wood. And this box is pretty, it's not, it looks pretty actually. There's, there's wood grain lines and stuff like that. I have another one. And I'm debating, I might paint it like on the outside like a really light green um, instead of the white and see what that looks like. Um, but this is a very, it's just happenstance that I had these two little boxes. I had just gone, I think I did it, brought, I did them in a haul, Hobby Lobby I believe, and 
because they're the shape of the honeycomb, it just made me think of that. So see, that's the one coat of gold. Just going to make sure I don't have any ridges. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what inspired me. So I think I'm going to do the top as well, although... Remember I, I was thinking I was going to put a saying up here? I'm not going to do the rim here. But I think I am going to do the inside. I'm not doing a saying. Do I need to put... I think I'm going to do it gold. This is all the little... And again, a ver, like, like one coat. And when I go off the edge on things... It's easy if you just like kind of, I can't explain it, but it's going to be a sheer coat. Let me just see if I'm getting it on the edge. I could just do the whole edge in gold after I just shaded it and everything. So see, I don't know what the camera's picking up. I'm not even in the shot. This is really sheer, so you're going to be able to see through it. So I want to make sure my, my lines are going according to the grain. Like that. So it's just a shimmer. Eh, I can see in the, in the, in the, there's something happening in here. I might have to put two coats. But let me just look at the edge. I'm going to take, let me just take a butt wipe, a baby wipe, and just because I've already sprayed it with a matte varnish, the edge, well, maybe I didn't even get the edge that well, but it should just wipe right off the gold, and if, if there's a little bit, it's okay. I think I'm going to need two coats. And then I am going to varnish, like I said, with satin varnish. I'm going to do my B. I already, um, you know what? Let me do, what am I, maybe just asphaltum since I have it on my desk. It's a really dark brown. I think black would probably be better. I have black too. And I don't want to like make it solid. I kind of just want to hit it, hit and miss it. Uh, I'll use a round because I'll be able to just pat it. You won't be able to see the bottom. So if I can clean up the edge. Yeah, I like that. I think it just cleans it up. Because it's a box, it's going to be handled. The ones on the plaque, I guess you would call it, I did them, yeah, it's like a plaque. Tracy did them on a big tag. And I hope you go check them out. Um, she goes through the whole tutorial. Oh, God. <laughs> but watch, you just take a butt wipe. Because it was varnished. I'll be able to get it off. So it's off. It's just not off um, in those little nooks and crannies. Uh, I have like a, this is what I'm using. I'm going to dip it in water. I just want to be gentle because um, I could probably just use a, a wet brush. Like just use water and get it in the nooks and crannies. Can you see what I'm doing? That was really crazy, right? But, you know, accidents happen. It's not the end of the world. But it would have stunk if this wasn't varnished because the varnish is creating that barrier. There. We're back. It's a little, it's got gold on top. Because I have gold in my fingers. There's a um, metallic, like, 
I can't explain it. Like, it's okay with me if it has a little metallic. I actually painted his wings with a pearlescent. Um, and I could always add glitter. Alright, where was I? I don't want to break them. Because that would be getting too carried away. Alright. I'll go off camera and do that so I don't cause another ruckus. I think doing it on camera can get me in trouble sometimes. Because, you know, you're just, I'm rushing or I'm trying to talk and do it at the same time where I would just be more careful if I wasn't on camera. So this is my second coat. And in the box, I do not think I need a second coat. You're not going to, you don't notice it the same as you do on the lid. All right. And then I'll take that same piece of baby wipe and just Alright, I'm going to let that dry, and I'll come back and attach the B with you. I'm going to screw on the, um, or no, first I'm going to varnish the whole thing with a coat of satin varnish. Satin varnish. Uh, I'm going to fix my B, and I'm going to get ready to assemble the whole thing, so I'll be right back. Alright, it's all together. That was just, I had to do the screwing in the hinge off camera. It's a little fudgy. This is how it came. This is the hinge it came with. It has that magnetic closure. And so this is the box. Like I said, I'm going to still, the bottom might have a little bit of, uh, I probably jumped the gun. It wasn't dry. You know what it is? There's stuff on this uh, Tim Holtz mat. Anywho, I'm going to put some feet on here anyway. So now I just have to really decide where to put my bee. I already glued a little round piece of wood there. So it's just going to stand off a little bit. And it's funny because I did paint those leaves on there and I really like them. So I don't really want to cover them. But I think the bee is the star of the show. I could do it this way. Put them in the middle. Oh wow, I kind of like it in the middle. He could be pointing in either direction. This is like, it is a little wonky. Um, I, I like them in the corner like that. I like them like that, I think. It just covers up the leaves. Let's see if I do this corner. Covers up more leaves too. I think I'm leaning toward either the center or like that. Or it could go a little straighter. It could be on here like he's actually in the center. But then I think I'm covering up like there's empty space here. This is a big decision. No, it's not. It's not that bad. All right. I think I might want to do it. I'm going to use um, Gorilla Glue. This is the gel. You know who got me into this? Well, first it was fish tanks, but uh, Renee Mullins uses this for her to assemble her dimensional pieces. So I'm going to just put a dab, and I'm going to go with it. Let's see. Oh my god, I can't decide. I'm putting it like that. A little catty corner. I'm just holding it so that I can kind of see if it looks even. That's it. I'm leaving it. And that's it. So there's the box. I love it. I think it turned out cute for not thinking much about it, you know. Um, coming up. Alright you guys, that was a lot of stop and start, but I'm going to send you over to Tracy Moreau's uh, to get the pattern packet and play, you know. It is spring and have fun. Thanks for watching.